Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So we got XRP here, guys, on the daily trading right now at about 64 and a half cents. Uh, you guys can see we have been coming out of this bottom uh, quite healthily. Uh, this is on the daily. I'll put it on the hourly just to uh, demonstrate here how we've been moving up over the last couple of days now. So a very prominent double bottom here. You guys can see that double bottom came out of that quite healthily, retraced a little bit here, so matching this level of support right over here and now we're continuing to make our way up. So XRP looking very healthy coming out of this. Let me just bring up Bitcoin real quickly. Uh, this is Bitcoin on the hourly. You can see guys Bitcoin also looking very promising after this new low that we saw for Bitcoin 28,600. Uh, Bitcoin did go up as high as about 35,000 and now we're trading in around uh, 33,200, 300 give or take. So the crypto market not looking too, too bad. Market cap right now at about 1.3 trillion. We've got Bitcoin dominance hovering at around 46.4%, so up a little bit. And Bitcoin and Ethereum are, uh, you know, if we compare it to the rest of the crypto space, are the ones that aren't doing too well today. Down uh, Bitcoin down 2.85%. Ethereum down 3.67%, give or take. Uh, and you guys can see the rest of the crypto market uh, either fairly flat or up by a little bit. Uh, we got some cryptocurrencies uh, down by anywhere between 1% and 5%. Others that are up anywhere between 1% and 5%. So some movement. Of course, some cryptocurrencies doing better than others. But we're not seeing a distinctive trend to the upside or to the downside for the entire crypto market as a whole. Interesting to note that. I think, though, uh, that overall we are moving up. And so this is very positive for the crypto space. Guys, I just wanted to mention this paid promotion from Unstoppable Domains. It is with regards to blockchain.com. And now their 31 million registered users across 200 countries can now send funds with a simple human readable username instead of a full length wallet address. And yes, they can do this through Unstoppable Domains. Now guys, if you still don't have an Unstoppable Domain, uh, I do have an affiliate link in the description of this video. You can use it if you want, you don't have to use it. But yeah, blockchain.com, the world's largest crypto wallet provider, now adopts .crypto as the standard for sending and receiving cryptocurrency. Your wallet's receiving address can now be personalized and simple. So you can buy, for example, your name.crypto, and uh, that could be your cryptocurrency address wallet for sending and receiving cryptocurrency. I also wanna remind you guys that these crypto addresses you don't ever have to renew them. So they are run on the blockchain. You own them outright. So you buy them once. You don't have to ever renew. And so this is now making sending cryptocurrency a lot easier. They just recently had another domain promotion where they were uh, making available other cryptocurrency domain names like .coin, .wallet, .bitcoin, uh, and others. So if you guys are interested, the link again is in the description of this video. The latest news though, blockchain.com now integrating with unstoppable domains. Let me get to some XRP news though, guys. This is from XRP Crypto Wolf. Judge hands Ripple another legal win by granting access to SEC's internal trading policies. So this, the latest update with regards to the SEC lawsuit, Ripple's request to obtain the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission's internal trading policies has been granted by Magistrate Judge Sarah Netburn. The court has opined that the request has met the low bar for relevance. So Ripple wanted to get the SEC's internal trading policies and the judge said yes, that is granted. The court finds that the information sought meets the low bar for relevance, including potentially with respect to the claims against the individual defendants. The SEC argued that its employees' internal trading policy were irrelevant, of course. However, Ripple claimed that it was important to see the distinction the regulatory watchdog had drawn between XRP and other digital assets. So here's a quote. The SEC's treatment of trading in digital assets, including any distinctions it draws between XRP and other digital assets, is directly relevant to show the SEC's own perspective on digital assets, which is relevant both to the application of the Howey test and Ripple's fair notice defense. So Ripple's lawyers really kind of gunning for that information to see how the SEC does view trading. Uh, and so looking to get their trading policies, it has been granted by Judge Sarah Netburn. And guys, I was actually shocked when I heard this just yesterday, tributes and conspiracy theories swirl in the wake of John McAfee's death. Yes, John McAfee has died. The death of computer security pioneer and international fugitive John McAfee has been met with an outpouring of emotions on crypto Twitter. So apparently what happened was a Spanish court had ordered McAfee's extradition to the United States. And just hours after that happened, he was found dead in a Spanish jail cell in Spain. 
So former National Security Agency employee and whistleblower Edward Snowden weighed in on this. He criticized the global reach of U.S. enforcement and warned that McAfee's untimely end may not be the only one, as Julian Assange's story could end much the same way. He tweeted, Europe should not extradite those accused of nonviolent crimes to a court system so unfair and the prison system so cruel uh, that native-born defendants would rather die than become subject to it. So we got an outpouring of condolences, uh, one from Charles Hoskinson, I'm not going to read them all. Uh, Anthony Pompliano down here posting a pic with him and John McAfee. Uh, Kim.com also posted a statement, I believe, on Twitter, an internet entrepreneur who is fighting his own extradition charges from New Zealand over his file-sharing network mega upload, lamented McAfee's drug abuse taking away from his potential, stating, uh, a pioneer in data security, I always thought he partied too hard, should have avoided the drugs and focus on using his brilliant mind for good. When he had a sober mind, it was all about about freedom. And apparently, guys, there are some conspiracy theories as well, because John McAfee posted this on Twitter, Martin Volk noting this as well, I'm not saying one or the other, but this is at least suspicious, no? John McAfee posted this on November 30th, 2019, getting subtle messages from U.S. officials saying, in effect, we're coming for you, McAfee, we're going to kill yourself. Yes, you read that right, we're going to kill yourself. I got a tattoo today just in case. If I suicide myself, I didn't. I was whacked. Check my right arm. So here is the post from that tweet. I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole on this one, but I thought I'd just bring this to your attention uh, as this is definitely crypto-related news. John McAfee uh, has been very, very active in the cryptocurrency space for as long as I've been there, at least. Uh, so just thought I'd bring you guys that. I saw this from Wrath of Kahneman Guy's recent article with regards to blockchain-based healthcare system. It mentions Ripple as an example of a permissionless system that does not require incentivized nodes. So this coming from a Journal of Medical Health, uh, basically talking about proof-of-work protocols, and uh, they describe Bitcoin down here, also proof-of-stake protocols. And then down here, two main types of blockchains that can be used for this particular project. Permissionless, anyone can join the network and receive permissionless authentication. Bitcoin Bitcoin and Ethereum are perhaps the best well-known examples for this, but then down here they mention it is on a permissiveness basis to select a group of participants. The Ripple payment system is a good example of a decentralized system. There is no mandatory cost in permissionless blockchains and thus the reward in such systems is given to nodes based on the number of validated blocks. In a new generation permission blockchains, incentives are typically not necessary. Both nodes and participants must be verified for enterprise-oriented solutions to succeed. So mentioning Ripple in this uh, journal here, not even for payments, but with regards to blockchain-based healthcare. So putting a healthcare-based system on the blockchain, and this again from the Turkish Journal of Computer and Mathematics Education. So thought that was interesting, mentioning Ripple as an example in that. We're also seeing more XRP adoption, in this case, Paraguay University, to accept XRP in August, so coming in a couple of months. This from the Cryptic Poet, posting out this article here, Paraguay's Universidad Americana will be accepting cryptocurrencies as payments starting in August. General Director Camilo Yamines Aguero told Coindesk, Universidad Americana has 17,000 students, 70% of whom study virtually, and it plans to accept guys Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dash, and XRP as forms of payment. So, XRP definitely one of those cryptocurrencies that they see fit as a form of payment. Clearly, they think it's going to be sticking around a while. According to uh, Yamirez Aguero, the university's crypto wallet is ready to receive payments, but won't activate the wallet until the fall term begins, when it plans to include a payments button on the website. So this is the first time I've seen a university uh, decide to accept cryptocurrency as payment, I'm assuming for tuition, books, uh, residents perhaps, although it does say 60% of their students are studying online virtually. They do still have that 40% that is uh, coming to the school. And so utilizing cryptocurrency as payments, uh, definitely forward thinking. Not only that, they are accepting XRP. So to me, that says, you know, XRP, not one of the cryptocurrencies that is going to be going away anytime soon, guys. Let's not forget, look at how many cryptos are in the crypto space. And it seems like this number just keeps creeping up and up and up. Over 10,600 cryptocurrencies now in the cryptocurrency space. And 99% of them are likely just going to disappear eventually. Uh, so, big news, the Paraguay University accepting XRP. And this coming out, guys, Bitcoin owner Senator Loomis supports cryptocurrency regulations. And what she says, I want a level playing field. This posted by James Rule XRP here on Twitter. 
Here's the article from Fox Business. So the Wyoming Republican Senator Cynthia Loomis, who owns Bitcoin, told Varney and Co. on Tuesday that she supports regulation for cryptocurrencies because she wants that level playing field. Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies remain unregulated within the U.S. financial system. Loomis said that she would support regulations for digital assets as long as they're very simple rules, easy to understand, and they're not overly restrictive because we want to see increased innovation in the space. So she gets it. Loomis made a statement on Tuesday as crypto link companies like Riot Blockchain Inc. and MicroStrategy Inc. were under pressure as the price of Bitcoin slumped below $30,000 a coin and at one point was on track to close at its lowest level this year. This article goes on to talk a little bit about Bitcoin price, uh, Elon Musk, but just down here when the host Stuart Varney asked Loomis how she feels about Bitcoin's decline on Tuesday, she says, I'm really excited about it because as soon as it drops a little more, I'm going to buy some more. My favorite stock I own is a company called United Rentals. Uh, she went on to note, I bought it when it dropped like a rock. So Cynthia Loomis into buying the dip. She explained that she held onto it and oh my gosh, it has performed beautifully over the years for me. So Cynthia Loomis, obviously still very bullish on Bitcoin, just sees this as another dip. Again, Bitcoin on the hourly and uh, you know, a 50% dip from its all time high, huge opportunity to buy. A lot of people in this space suggesting, you know, we are not in a bearish market. This is still a bull run and we are going to see even higher highs, not only for Bitcoin, but for a lot of the altcoins as well. And I don't know if you guys caught this, but this is huge. Central bank digital currencies is now getting the BIS's full backing. Things are happening so fast now, guys. This from Shelby Gosling here on Twitter. So a Reuters article just detailing this, central bank digital currencies get full BIS backing. And so the Bank for International Settlements has given its full backing to the development of central bank digital currencies, saying they are needed to modernize finance and ensure big tech does not take control of money. So we were talking about this the other day, right? Big tech like Facebook's Libra or rather DM project as it's now dubbed uh, was looking to really get into the financial sector and uh, you know modernize payments with their cryptocurrency, the DM coin. And uh, you know central banks all around the world were like, no, we cannot let this happen. We need to create uh, something new so that we can compete with these types of projects, big tech. And so, you know, that happened back in June of 2019. And uh, ever since then, I feel like the CBDC rush has been going on strong. Well, the BIS is now fully behind this, dubbed the central bank to the world's central banks, the BIS, which has coordinated many of their discussions on digital currencies, set out recommendations on Wednesday on how CBDC, such as the digital dollar, euro, yen, and won, should look. As part of its upcoming annual report, it estimated that at least 56 central banks and monetary authorities, representing around a fifth of the world's population, are now looking at digital currencies as commerce shifts online. So guys, I have this video from the Bank for International Settlements. I will link it in the description of this video. It is over just over an hour long. If you guys want to watch the entire thing, we got Benoit Carré here and Yun Sung Shin, both from the Bank of International Settlements, uh, discussing this. But get this, guys. The train has left the station, and I quote, the train has left the station, said Benoit Carré of the BIS, referring to the move towards central bank digital currencies and its support. It is not that we are getting carried away. We are just looking around. And so the train has left the station. Does that sound familiar to you? Why, yes, it does sound familiar to me, Working Money Channel. You know why? Remember back just last month, May of 2021, when Rosie Rios, the 43rd Treasury Secretary, joined the board at Ripple, was interviewed on NBC. This is what she had to say. Well, uh, I think the train's already left the station in terms of cryptocurrency. Uh, you may or may not know that I just joined the board of Ripple, and the reason why I chose to, to join that board, it's, in my opinion, one of the few cryptocurrency options out there that has a credible and legitimate use. So financial institutions use it to settle cross-border payments. Booyah! Straight from the horse's mouth, Rosie Rios mentioned this a month ago. Now we've got Benoit Carré also saying the train has left the station, referring to central bank digital currencies. The train has left the station, guys. So is this a coincidence? Have these guys been talking? Well, we know Brad Garlinghouse has had tons of meetings over the last several years with the Bank for International Settlements uh, and other organizations like the World Bank and the IMF. And these guys carefully craft what they say publicly. I would not doubt that they have already been in talks considering the connections that we've already seen. Not only that, guys, let me just bring you a few screen grabs here from Stuart XRP here on Twitter. This is just a screen grab of Benoit Curé's Twitter handle. Okay, only 7,874 followers here. But look at who he's following, guys. None other than Brad Garlinghouse, CEO at Ripple, and Mark Carney. 
Interesting to say the least. So do you think the central bank of central banks would make these bold statements if they weren't planning on using some kind of cryptocurrency for the future of finance? And I mean, come on, do you really think it's gonna be Bitcoin? Bitcoin is more of a speculative asset than, uh, than money. Um, and it has uh, certainly failed the, uh, the test of becoming a means of payment. <laughs> Again, guys, I will link the BIS conference in the description of this video. Things are moving fast, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.